Hi, I'm Richard Lobb. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to write simple questions using the Code Runner plugin for the Moodle Learning Management System. In order to do this, you'll need to have a Moodle server set up with Code Runner installed. If you need to know more about that, you can follow this particular link, Code Runner Documentation, Current Version, on this website, coderunner.org.nz. I, of course, am a teacher on this website, and I happen to have a course here called Demo that I'm going to go straight into. This is a brand new course, doesn't have any content, just has a few weeks with nothing in them. There's two ways I can author questions. I can use the or more link here, come down into the question bank, and I can enter my questions straight into the question bank. These are questions that I'm storing up ready for later use, for example, when I create quizzes. When I create questions in the question bank directly, the students don't have access to them until I put them in a quiz. So what I'm going to do instead is come back out to the top level of this course, and I'm going to create a quiz and put a Moodle Code Runner question into it. So I'm going to turn editing on, and I'm going to add an activity to one of the weeks. In this case, the first week, it's going to be a quiz activity, and I'm going to click Add. There I am, I've created, or I'm ready to create, my new quiz. So this is going to be a demo quiz. I should say something about it there, and I may want to set the timing and stuff like that for the students. You can read up about that. That's all Moodle standard. There's one thing that is not Moodle standard, and it's really, really important. That's this bit, question behavior. You must open that, and you must set how questions behave to adaptive mode. This will not be the default for you. It's the default on this website, but it's not generally the default on Moodle size. So I have to do that, uh, or at least I should do that, because if I forget, the review options during the attempt will not give the student specific feedback. This will generally, generally be turned off except for adaptive mode. So essentially what I'm saying is you must make sure that's turned on. Right, I can save my new quiz, and here it is, uh, but no questions have been added yet. Let's edit the quiz. I'm going to edit the quiz by adding questions to it. So I click the Add button here. I'm going to add a new question, and it's going to be of type Code Runner. When I click Add there, I get a question authoring form to fill out, which has all the test cases and the specification for the question. The most important thing right now is to say which particular type of Code Runner question I'm writing. There's some other ones that are built in, but you can add your own, and I'll explain how to add your own question types and languages in a later video. For now, let's, for example, look at C function. If I were to select that, down here I can open up question type details and get told about how the C function questions work. I'm going to instead, though, use a Python 3 question type, and again, it's now upgraded or updated to tell me what uh, Python 3 questions are about. They can be used for write a function, write a class, or write a program question. I'm going to write a function. So, what question category in the databank does it go into? It's going to go into the default for now. That will do fine. No, let's put it in the default for the course, sorry. And I'm going to call it um, square function in Python. Down here I need to put the specification, that is what I want the student to do. In this case I want them to write a function sqr of n that returns the square of its parameter n. And generally you should put an answer in. I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to do the absolute minimum amount of work here. Um, I haven't, I've taken the defaults of everything else here, and I'm just going to come down to the test cases. I'll come back to this form in a minute. Let's just do the minimum, which would be a test like printing the result that the student returns when I call their function with minus 5. I expect to get the output 25. I'm going to use that as an example, and I'm going to set at least one more question, which is the square of 7, which should produce the output 49. That's an absolute minimum sort of question. It's got one example, only one, and now when I save the changes, I have a working question. At least I hope it's working. It looks like that. So it automatically generated the for example table because I clicked the checkbox for that particular test case. I can test if it works by going def sqr of n, return n times n, and hopefully, got rather a large answer box with 18 
lines in it, it, it works. That's good. And you see the second test is now visible. I'm going to clean up the question a little bit. I'm going to copy the answer. I'm going to close that down and I'm going to go back to edit of the question. So firstly, I really should have provided that sample answer and I should have validated on save. This lets me check to make sure my test cases are all valid. I probably should have given the student one more example to make the example table include a positive number and I'm going to do a at least one more test, say the square of 9, which is obviously going to be 81. Let's make it minus 9, it's more interesting. That should also be 81. And you should generally have a hidden test case. The reason being that if you don't have hidden test cases, the students get to see all the tests and can create a, an answer that really only works on the tests you've exposed to them. So let's print the square of 11, which is going to be 121, and click Hide. So that's a hidden test case. The answer box was fairly large with 18 rows in it. Can't imagine a student using more than about five. Penalty regime was 10, 20. A better one or fairer one might be to give them one free submission, then charge them 10% for the next wrong answer, 20 for the second and so on. I usually use all or nothing grading, which means the student has to get all the test cases right to earn any marks. You can give marks for each passing test case, but I don't recommend that approach. With the answer here and validate on save, if I make a mistake in one of the tests, for example, I inadvertently type 20 there and try and save my question, I now get an error on the save to tell me that the test case isn't what was expected. In fact, I've made two mistakes as it was an inadvertent one. Um, 11, I expected 12, should have been 121. I said that the square of minus 5 was 20. It should have been 25. Now I can save the question and hopefully it all works. Let me do one last test. In this particular case, I can fill in the correct response because I've now provided it and check my question. It all looks good. That's my first question. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye.